one of the big things that you know people really want to hear about is how to how to not flake on new intentions for the for the new year and um I'm going to just read out a quick passage from The Art of Impossible here about keeping your word to yourself. So you said, most importantly, this rule always applies to goal setting. If you consistently break your word to yourself, once you set a goal, your brain immediately starts hunting for an easy way out. Meaning if you don't keep your word to yourself, your brain moves into I quit mode long before you've even gotten into the game. So I'm curious what your advice is to folks around uh, keeping their word to themselves and how that impacts uh, behavior change and, and goal attainment over the, over the longer term. Some of it's about self-confidence, right? If you start with the idea that flow states have triggers and the challenge skills balance is flow's most important trigger, meaning we pay the most attention to the present moment when the challenge at hand slightly exceeds our skill set. Right, so you want to stretch but not snap. When we're paying that kind of focus, it tends to drive dopamine, it tends to drive us into flow. Now, the question is, well, what creates challenge and skills? Like, how do we set that level? And how does the brain do it? Because it happens at a very unconscious level. One of the keys is self-confidence. In fact, uh, Susan Jackson, I believe this study is in Flow and Sports, the book she wrote with um, the Hatch Except Me High. Uh, Susan Jackson is a sports psychologist uh, who did a lot of early work on flow uh, at the University of Chicago and is now in Australia, still doing great work on flow. And she, in her work, they found among athletes, 81% of what could be meant by like the challenge, where do, how high, how great is this challenge and what are my skills? 81% was actually about self-confidence and less than 19% was actually the skills you're bringing to the challenge. So in certain scenarios, confidence plays a huge role. What creates confidence? One of the things that happens is in goal setting, as you pointed out, if you always break your goals, right? If you always, if you never keep your word to yourself, you have no confidence in yourself, right? This is why your brain starts looking for an easy way out. If you never break your word to yourself, meaning that you never create a goal for yourself that you don't put everything into, don't go after with everything, never back off, don't stop until it's done, then your brain even if you set an impossibly hard, challenging goal, your brain just keeps problem solving. If it thinks, oh, wow, you never quit. Quitting is not an option. It will keep problem solving your way towards that solution, which is one of the things you're probably going to need to get to any high, hard goal. So that's, that's first and foremost. And what I mean by keeping your word to yourself, I don't set a goal, meaning I don't write it down in a, in a notebook, in a goal setting notebook, or say it out loud to anybody else if I do not intend to accomplish it. And what do I mean by that? In my mind, everybody's a little different, but when I set a goal, it usually means I'm going to work on it for an, for an hour a day until the problem is solved. Like, I will just keep going if, and I just keep going. at the time. Now, obviously, there are certain times when you want to back off and you want to say, okay, this is, this is a bad idea. I'm going towards something that, you know, it turns out I shouldn't be going towards or it's not going to work that way and I need to regroup. There are those situations. But as a general rule, if I say it out loud, if I call it a goal, I don't stop until it's done. And so if it goes onto my clear goals list, my daily clear goals list for the day, I don't stop working for the day until everything on that list is done. If it, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera high hard goals or, or massively transformative purposes, I just think of it that way. And I'm very, very, very cautious to not talk about my goals out loud. This is a, this is, I talk about this in Art Impossible. I've talked about this a lot out loud and in public. And I think it's really important, especially uh, Gen X is a little different, but when you get into uh, millennia, the millennial generation and, and younger, I see this happening very frequently, people sort of lead with their goals. Hi, I'm, I'm Jack. I'm here to save the world or whatever it is. Or, and it turns out that when we talk about our goals, the brain gets all excited and it releases all the dopamine that we would normally get when we actually went after our goals. Now, dopamine is the reward chemical. It's the feel-good motivating chemical that gives us the energy to go after our goals. 
talking about your goals out loud actually gives you that energy, gives you that dopamine. So you get the reward without having to do the effort, without having to do the work. And you, and you, and you then trying to get like up for the hard fight of, oh, I got to go after this goal. Now it's twice as hard, right? You're still as far away from the goal as you were and all the kind of motivating neurochemical boost that you could use to get towards that goal has already been exploded and worse since dopamine is such a big driver of flow you're now going to have a harder time getting into flow along the way so there's a lot of penalties for talking about your goals out loud rather than putting them on a list and keeping them to yourself and just working on them until they're done and that also means um i try to set goals that i can accomplished that are that are you know what i mean i do set impossible goals i have massively transformed purposes but those are more about process goals like what i'm right how am i going to do this today what am i going to do tomorrow um i don't tend to set huge impossible outcome goals very often um because i won't i won't quit until it's done if what you've heard on flow research collective radio has been helpful Please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Music